Network. You're listening to the AfricaMusicLaw.com show, Africa's premier entertainment law show empowering the African artist. And now, your host, attorney, speaker, visionary, game changer, Ms. Uduak. Hey, Emma people, it's your one and only certified game changer, Miss Uruwa. Welcome to the 105th episode of the AfricanMusicLaw.com show. Check this out, folks. I actually wasn't ready to start doing the podcast yet, but I'm glad that it's the first episode of 2018 and that producer, Ade, forced me out of stopping everything and getting this done. I think it's a great thing, actually. You know how sometimes you have a an article, a story that you know you should probably expand more on, but you're so busy uh, working on everything else. So I'm glad he pushed me to do that. So that's awesome, awesome, awesome. If you're just joining us for the first time, my name is Uduak Oduak. I go by Miss Uduak for short. I'm a fashion and entertainment lawyer with the law firm of AB2 Law Group PC, located in California, USA. The show you're listening to, the African Music Law Show, is strictly about the business of empowering the African artist and secondarily the creative industry at large. By that I mean the US, the UK, and across the African continent. Our execution is pretty simple. We take on the latest in celebrity legal drama, music business, and industry news, and we provide legal and business commentary and analysis on hot topics in pop culture that intersect and at times collides with the law. We also invite our industry experts, our artists, and other cool people, people that I like to call AML people, to share their insights and experiences to benefit you. If you'd like to subscribe to the show, it's generally a weekly show. I haven't kicked up the 2018 schedule really yet, uh, but it's typically a weekly show. It publishes every Monday. Ensure that you get on our site africanmusiclaw.com and all social media websites which you can find us with our handle African Music Law and check us out we're on Pod Directory, Apple Podcast Teacher Radio, we're everywhere so check us out in that form if you'd like to follow me personally you can find me on Instagram as Miss Uduak, M-S-U-D-U-A-K my Twitter handle is at Uduak Law, that's my personal Twitter account and yeah, follow me Now for this, I'm just going to cut straight to the chase. I just want to talk very briefly about this case. So last week, I was on NotJustOkayo.com when I saw the third podcast episode of Music and Then Some, which is the podcast show that uh, Not Just Okay has launched. It's actually a pretty good podcast show. I enjoyed OVO, who is um, an executive at Not Just Okay and Demola are doing just amazing things. And they have OVO co-hosted with, um, I forget the girl's name, but her handle is Renny by Nature. So the topics were pretty varied, but they had for the first time a guest. The guest is Boyega Ogunlesi is actually his formal name. And he goes by Ade, A-D-E-Y. And he's a producer. He's produced some different things for his leading uh, artists in Nigeria, particularly. 2016, he produced a song that ended up being one of the biggest hits, if not the biggest hit in uh, Nigeria for last year. The song is titled Juice. The main recording artist on it is YC. And then the featured artist is Malik Berry. Now, most of you know Malik Berry is a producer, an awesome one at that. I love his work. He has certainly been a guest on the African Music Law Show as well. He's part of the African Music Law community, and he makes great music. You can't take that away from him. He's worked with Whiskid, he's worked with David Doe, all kinds of really amazing industry artists as well. So in the beginning of the song, Juice, it goes very upon this. So generally when you hear that, specific to the African music industry, and let's just narrow it down to Nigeria. The first thing you think is that's the producer who produced the song. So it was no surprise that the entire African population that has heard the song believe that Malik Berry produced the song. So let's go back to that podcast that I told you I was listening to and Not Just Okay, where they have a guest by the name of Ade, who's a producer. For the first time, at least the first time I'm hearing it, 
Adair reveals that that song actually belonged to him, that he produced the song, and that at the end of the song was the Barry Pondis call out. He instead, for whatever reason known to him, decided to cut that out in terms of when I say cut out, basically edit that and then paste that instead at the front part, the intro of the song. So those who mix and master actually have a little knowledge of, of sound engineering, taking a, a 10 week course, enjoy it. And, and, you know, also like to dibble and dabble a little bit on the production side for sound engineering. So basically he went, he cut part of that track, take, took the end part of it, put it in front, mixed and mastered it, make it all sound beautiful and nice. And so therefore, when we heard Barry Pond this, instead of thinking about a day or whoever else would have been on there, saying, hey, this is a person who produced it. All of us think that Malik Berry produced the song. Now, if you're a producer out there listening to this, and as Ade correctly identified on the podcast show, that is terrible. You don't do that. That's horrible branding. Basic branding 101. Why would you do that? But I'm not going to beat Ade up too much because he realizes his error. And he has said that uh, Malik Berry has tried to correct people as well to say, hey, you know what? No, I didn't produce the song. But as he correctly pointed out, there's only so much Malik Berry can do. So all producers listening, if you are in Africa's entertainment market, which I'll go more into specifics as it relates to producers, please, please, please do not do what Ade did because you forever be telling people that you produced a song and it'll become frankly speaking pointless because in everyone's mind Malik Berry produced a song and there's not much you can do to change that and that's just terrible branding so I don't know what the intention was he says he wants a career at least in the podcast that will emulate where Malik Berry has been whatever adoration adulation whatever you have for a producer or an artist, you can't forget yourself in the process and you can't do it in a way that's detrimental to you. So we've addressed the branding error on the part of Ade with respect to having Malik Berry as a call out in the intro of the song. Now let's go to the second issue that propelled me to do this podcast. And that is the issue of the statements that Ade made against Tiny Entertainment and Sony Africa. So Tiny Entertainment is the record label that YC is signed with. And there's some sort of relationship with Sony Africa that Tiny Entertainment has. The parameters of the relationship has not quite been spelt out, but we do know that the relationship has had a little bit of a rocky terrain. Last year, about August last year, we saw YC attack Sony West Africa's Michael Ugu on social media because he was unhappy with that relationship. So let's put that to the side. What is the specific claim that Ade is making against Tiny Entertainment and Sony Africa in his uh, podcast with OVO? It's an interesting conversation that transpired. Let me do this. Let me have you guys listen to it and then we'll come back and and deal with the specific statements he makes. You're listening to the AfricaMusicLaw.com show. Africa's premier music business and entertainment law show empowering the African artists. Ade, you've currently had a good year. Like, you've currently had a good year mm-hmm. in 2017. Yeah. Um, you, you produced Olamide's Wavy Level. Yes. Which, I love. which is an absolute banger. But of course, you produced arguably the biggest song of the year. For sure, the biggest Afro hip hop song of 2017. Juice, Juice. YC, yeah. Malik Berry. Mm-hmm. How did that magic happen, bro? Um, it just happened, man. It's, it's been months. Mm-hmm. Months of work resulted in that song, you know, because I know I pitched that song to multiple people and they all turned it down. They turned that song down. That's yeah. insane. They turned it down. In fact, too much, just too me much. And, me and my uncle had an interview on MTV where we were talking about it and I was like, guy, I came to David's studio when I used to live in the key one. Mm-hmm. I came to David's studio and I played the beat plus the sort of the idea I had for you and David and they both turned it down. Wow. wow. Yeah, it happens like that sometimes. That's my job. And then YC hops on it. 
I mean, no one can call it YC's first hit because he had already done Omar Laji. Yeah. But if it's YC, though. But this is his biggest it's song YC to date. So well. You know, and then Malik Berry just that killed is... it. <laughs> How did you handle, because for a long time, people thought Malik Berry produced that song. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love your honesty. No, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's funny because I look up to Malik a lot um, mm. because he's done what I'm trying to mm-hmm. do. Um, he's he out of all the producers that, with the exception of maybe Don Jazzy, he's the only person that has transitioned from that production to a full fledged artist. Yeah. Um, you know, so having him on the song was was an exciting thing for me, and it's so funny because in the beginning of the song, right, where it says, "Oh, very fine, this one," oh, mm-hmm. that was actually in his verse. I was the one that cut it out and put it in the beginning of the song. So, so you are part of the reason why people are confused. I'm part of the reason, yeah. I was That's just so right. excited to work with um, with Malik and I was like, yo, I need to, I need people to know from the concept that Malik is on this song. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So it's just, but it's nonetheless, it's still your song. Huh? I said nonetheless, it's still your song. Yeah, I mean, it's still it, it, it happens, man. And, you know, you just have to take it on the chain and, right. and, and move on. Do you um, think, do you think Barry, because I see a lot of the tweets and, you know, not to instigate, I'm not trying to incite anything. Yeah. But, you know, Miles Berry just doesn't really say much about... It, like, when people say, produced by Miles Berry, they hail him, they give him all the credit. The only person I ever see refuting that is you, or maybe a few fans that say, yeah. no, I did produce it, because you get the glory. But do you think maybe Miles Berry himself should do more to make it clear I, that he I didn't produce it? I think to Malik's credit, when the song came out and the initial confusion started, um, he released several statements. Oh, he did? Yes, he did. And I, the thing is, I don't expect him to release statements every day. True. Do you get what I mean? Like, True. you know, he has other things that he's worried about, his own music. And, um, you know, he did enough. Um, but I felt that the damage, which was partially also caused by myself, was already done. Um, but he definitely did enough. I like, he did enough for me not to be mad about it. Okay, as long, okay. Do you understand what I mean? Enough. enough for me not to be mad about it. Now, whether my name was on the artwork is not a different story. Yeah, For the lot, see, even me, me OVA. Yeah. When I first heard the song, I did not know you produced it. And my time is dead. Really? Yeah. But what in the master, it was lowered. In the master, and I didn't get to hear the master. It was lowered. Yeah. That's some shady move, bro. Well, I mean, welcome to Nigeria. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's shady. Because I couldn't, I couldn't tell. It's, it's there. I mean, but okay, so if, if, if that happened, is there a possibility that other th- okay let me rephrase no, go on. Mm-hmm. are you benefiting from that song would you say you're benefiting from that song in no. any way shape or form no as I know you get business do you think there are people who have have, have people come to you to say I bet produce song for me will be like this song like, just, yeah of course and, you of know, course. I mean that's natural that's, naturally but yeah. um, you know I've been able to to achieve so much outside of the of the opportunities available to me from that song, um, obviously it helped me um, to add you know a number one record to my my Absolutely. my my list. You get that I have a number one record, and Lord knows I took that to any chance I get. I will mm. say it to anybody. Of course, you know. But um, in terms of um, benefiting from that song, um, financially, I'd say no. Um, Hold up, financially no. Yeah. How? That song is how many months old now? Because wait, that song, it's a long time. That song is a, uh, and YC is under Sony, right? I mean, so you, how are you not benefiting from it? Because I'd like to think that everything is being done the right way mm. and you are getting your own financial cut from the song. No. Are you telling me, That's apart false. from the first payment, because the, there was a first payment, yeah. right? It was tiny though. It was, it was, <laughs> it was tiny. Nice one, literally and figuratively. Yeah, the tiny has been nice. But, um, <laughs> nah, I haven't um, gotten any. I made more money from Wavy Level than I've made from Juice. But Juice is like 10 times bigger than Wavy Level. 15. Yeah? <laughs> no, literally. Times yeah, bigger than Wavy 15 Level. times bigger. So you're not getting any, any checks coming in the mail? No. Why now? I mean, you, 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 the problem with Nigeria is that, you know, if you show your soft side a bit too much, you know, people always take you for a dickhead. Like, that's just the truth about it. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's why everybody's so guarded here. Everyone is so guarded and everybody's so angry because, you know, you make one small step into, you know, trusting someone and they turn around and they just dumb. 
you know, all that on you. And it's, it's really bad. And for me, the kind of person I am, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it moving because regardless of juice or not, my life will still go on. Do you mm-hmm. get what I mean? I was, I was, I was, I was eating, I was buying this food before I produced juice. <laughs> you know, I was okay. I was going on holidays before I produced juice. So it's not like it would change my life in any significant way. What me, I'm personally about is actually doing the right thing. Right. And I, I get, I get upset when people who are close to you take measures to make sure that they, they don't do the right thing. Bro, if, if, if I be you, That's I, a good I, definition. I, I mean, I, I, I love what you just said. Yeah. It's very mature of you. But at the same time, in, in doing the right thing, if I were yeah. I'd go to court. It's happening. It's happening? Yeah. Okay, so there's... It's happening. What you're just saying is an exclusive. You do realize that. Yeah. Because right? you don't... You barely grant interviews. I don't... You are very good I, I don't like interviews, yeah. Yeah, because so... this is the only question that they ask me all the time. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. So if a lawsuit is coming, then are they aware that it's coming? They should be aware. Ah, no, wow. It's, it's a funny one because, you know, both parties believe that they're right. And what is actually right is the black and white on the paper. Right. Um, you know, so I, I don't want to, you know, s- s- to dwell on it too much or stay on it too much. But the fact of the matter remains, if I haven't been, you know, if I'm not making money from that song, it's a disservice to me. I big just, time, bro. You know, big time. Um, because you can't tell this people are kicking heavy. Do you understand what I mean? And that, that, that's, that's the thing, you know. The whole point of doing music with somebody who... You know, me and YC are cool. He comes to the studio, record three or four songs. There's no mention of or money or this or that. We're just making music. Do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because the end goal is to grow together. And when your own goal is different from that, you know, it, it then creates this... You know, conflict of interest. There's a bit of friction, and um, it's unfortunate. You know, because it means me and YC between us, we have like thirty songs, and it means that none of those songs are gonna ever come out. That's messed up. So the problem is not YC. The problem is the timing. I I would assume so. Yeah. That's messed up. Because yeah. me and YC, like, I mean, YC was here like, four or five days ago. You know, we just sat down and ate pizza and just chilled. Yeah, oh, man. I hope that thing gets sorted. Child. No, same, same, same. I hope it gets sorted. Um, it's 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 unfortunate, man. But this is the problem with doing business. In Nigeria, you know, you, you, for somebody like Baduna, Baduna would call me, bro, I you picked up your check, your check is ready. Ah, Do you understand? Wow. And that's somebody who I look up to, so I'm like, okay, if somebody like this can do this for me, what makes you different? You know, and you just, it's, you, you, there's very few people like that. Do you understand? They're really, they're, there's, they're there's very few people. Everybody just wants to, to make the most money from you, you know. Really pay with the service at the end of the day. Yeah. But you just, sometimes you just get used to it, you just keep it moving, man. There, used, there, there, there seems to be that huge disconnect between what artists make and what producers make from songs. Yeah. And that's messed up. Ideally, the, the producer and artist should make the same amount. Pretty of much. Um, no. the, the biggest cut of the money should go to the label, rightly so, because they fund, excuse me, they fund the project. But as in terms of pro, pro, producer and artist, the producer, all the time from royalty should make the same amount as the artist because the artist also gets additional revenue streams from shows. Right. True. Do you understand? So it all, it all balances, it all, it's designed in such a way that it all balances out. You know, but when you try and cut off the royalty streams and I'm just, it's like, yeah, keep cool, man. I'll still be living. you still be living. Do you understand? Man. I have a cocaine white dance, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm chilling. Say yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm chilling. You know, do you understand? I'll still yeah. live the best, the best life that I want to live. Do you get what I mean? And that's why I can keep it moving. But, they would definitely, you know, not escape the consequences of that decision. Okay, you guys heard him, right? The snippet where OVO is asking him about, first he talks about the branding I just addressed. And then after that, he gets into, hey, what's the what's the situation with the song? That song is such a big deal. Have you made any money from it? And the producer says, yes. So Ade says, yes, I've made money from it, but tiny. Of which, of course, both co-hosts laugh and say, yeah, Tiny in the literal sense, uh, from Tiny Entertainment, that is. And he also makes allegations that in terms of the credit of the song, uh, that the, the, the song had tags on it with his name, but somehow it was lowered uh, in the master of the song and he didn't get to hear it. Then Ovio says, hey, have you benefited from the song in any shape or form to quote Ovio? Ade came back and said no. And then he gets into the explanation of, hey, I was played that initial lump sum as, uh, as uh, Ovio had asked him. 
but there's more money that I should be paid. Now, when we're talking money here, uh, music business 101, in the sense we're talking about in the producer sense, that we're talking royalties. So the royalties that he says are due him uh, and that he hasn't received it. Let, let me even quote him. He says, uh, from what you just heard, I've been able to achieve so much outside of the opportunities available to me from that song. Obviously helped me to be able to add a number one record to my list. And then he goes on, but in terms of benefiting from that song financially, I would say no. Then it gets a little more interesting. And frankly speaking, when I first heard it, which was, I believe, last week, I was like, wow, you got to be kidding me. Then I came back this weekend, actually, and listened to it because in the middle of everything I was doing, played it over and over again. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And so, you know, uh, wrote something and shared on the Africa Music World blog. But let, let's narrow in. He says it's a funny one because both parties believe they're right. And what is actually right is what is in black and white on paper. So I don't want to dwell on it too much or stay on it too much. But the fact of the matter remains that if I'm not making money from that song, it's a disservice to me. And then, he, of course, as you hear him say, um, he hasn't received money You're from it. And he Africa is considering Musical. legal action. Yeah. And he believes that Tiny Entertainment or I, I suppose Sony West Africa as well are aware of his intent to sue if things do not work out uh, favorably with the way he believes it should be working out for him. Now, artists, producers, listen to me very carefully. What Ade is saying is actually quite interesting if you think of it in the context of the Nigerian market. Because if you think of it in the context of the Nigerian market, you could ask yourself, why is he asking for more money? And I'll say that only for a particular reason. The way the U.S. market or Western markets work when it comes to producers is very different from how producers are paid in Nigeria. And I'll break it down a quick second for you guys uh, so you have a clear idea of what I'm talking about. But both in the U.S. and here, producers continue to have a challenge when it comes to compensation that they should receive adequate compensation. And if you don't know what you're doing or you don't have adequate representation or if you don't have good bargaining power or you might have good bargaining power, but you don't know the value of your, of your work, then you might undersell or undermine yourself. With everything that Ade has said, it seems like he understood his value. He did what he was supposed to do. They signed an agreement. They had a, a, a split with respect to what that percentage will be, but he hasn't received his royalties. Before we get into that discussion, let me tell you the distinction between uh, producers and how they're paid in the U.S. where I practice law and where I'm at and also producers in Nigeria. And I know with respect to producers in Nigeria, because I've been at this for a while with respect to African music law, and um, also have other platforms that for the past 10 years, I've been sharing artist music, they send all this to me. And then in terms of my practice, I get solicited a lot from um, talents in Nigeria and across Africa for representation uh, on their matters. So let's start with producers paid in the U.S., a music producer receives advance fees from the label or a lump sum from the artist who directly hires the music producer. Now, the artist is always responsible for paying the producer, even though the label may advance the fees. The advance fees an artist receives from a label to produce an album covers fees for the producers, the arrangers, the engineers, the recording costs, and personal expenses for the artist. A producer in the U.S. market, typically signs what's known as a producer agreement, and it's not uncommon to expect to complete a split sheet. And I've talked about the split sheet before, and that is essentially will divide the intellectual property rights between the artist and the producers. In addition, the music producer will receive royalties in the form of mechanical and performance royalties known as points in the U.S. market. Those points vary from 1% to 5% of the suggested list retail price, SLRP, as it's known for an album, depending on the experience of the producer. And then finally, the producer also receives credits on the album. So that's just an overview of the U.S. market in a quick nutshell of how producers are paid in the U.S. You're listening now let's to look the at Africa Nigeria's Musical. market. In Nigeria's market, a producer receives an upfront lump sum fee from the artist or label. And in fact, most artists buy non-exclusive beats 
from producers ranging from what would be basically a hundred US dollars to two hundred dollars per beat. A more experienced producer may sell beats for as high as six hundred dollars or more. Typically, in the Nigerian market, there is no written contract, which is why it would be a non-exclusive beat. Although sometimes, even when there's no written contract, a lot of artists walk around thinking that it's exclusive to them. And then, of course, we hear the story of, hey, did we don't use this beat? And then somebody else used this beat. And it's, it's, hey, you're still in someone's work when you actually haven't stolen. It's just that you didn't get into an agreement with the producer to say this is an exclusive beat. So the producer owns the beat regardless and can sell it to as many people as he or she chooses to. The producer in the Nigerian music market should be earning royalties. But typically, and for a long time, although things are starting to change, the producer does not earn any royalties. If the producer is also an engineer, he or she can charge higher upfront fees. There is no production or songwriting credits for songs produced on albums. Although, as I said at the beginning, many producers usually will insist that the artists shout them out on their songs, which is why it's bizarre that Ade would then take the shout out of a different producer who's an artist on Juice and put that that producer artist in the front of his song makes no sense whatsoever. So that is the outline contrast in the U.S. and the Nigerian market. Now let's go back to Ade's uh, facts, right? In this instance, what he's saying is specific to Nigerian market, I received that upfront lump sum fee that typically you would see in the Nigerian market. We do not know what contract he signed. So trying to get into the details of his claim would be only speculating. What we can do, however, is just to address the fact that he says he hasn't gotten his royalties. So when he's saying he hasn't gotten his royalties, remember I told you, typically producers in the in Nigerian market should be getting royalties. However, the way they negotiate and the way they're treated in the value chain for Nigeria is really, really bad and very low level. So when you think about the food ladder, they're like at the bottom, bottom, bottom. So typically you wouldn't have such negotiating You're power, but I has been able to, to get show. his producer cred high enough that people can take him seriously to allow him to negotiate a written contract and get into the details of what that written contract ought to look like. So he's saying, yes, I received an upfront lump sum fee from the artist or label, whoever paid him. But despite receiving that, and we don't know what amount, despite receiving that. And then secondly, unlike most producers in Nigeria, I actually had a written contract with respect to my beat, my master recording. And I had some sort of understanding of split with respect to my royalties, unlike most producers in Nigeria. So the question now is when he says I received that lump sum, but I haven't received the royalties. The question is why hasn't he received the royalties and what did he sign? Okay. So that's the discussion for you, the artist and you, the producer, You want to make sure you you try to emulate, not copy word for word what we do in the U.S. Because I always say Western ideologies and ways of doing things are not necessarily the way Africans should do things. Africans should come up with their own innovative ideas and, 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 and create solutions that fit the Nigerian market or fit the African market as a whole. So you do want to have a written contract because if you don't on the Nigerian copyright law, you... Essentially, if you're an artist buying a beat and you think that you have a exclusive transfer of the rights in that beat, you don't because you must have that in writing for that to transfer that asset to transfer to you. And then also royalties need to be discussed and put there. So that's essentially it. Um, let's see how this case plays out. We don't know what will happen in the final analysis or how it plays out. But what we do know is that Ade is making some serious allegations against Tiny Entertainment, as well as Sony Africa, if Sony Africa indeed has an existing relationship with um, Tiny Entertainment. But we know for sure, he said, there's an issue of he's not, he's not being paid his royalties. 
And what happens next is for him to decide with his lawyers how he wants to resolve that issue, maybe get into a settlement negotiation, or he sues. So that's a wrap up for me. And just to recap what we've just covered, number one, branding, 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 producers, brand yourself. It's not only the artist branding and please avoid such a mistake. It's a big mistake because YC's juice is all that and more. We've heard it all over Africa. We know the radio stations have played that song, Tired. They're still playing it. We've heard it here in the diaspora. We, we The song has just gone everywhere. And every time you hear it, Barry pun this. So you think Marlake Barry is the one who produced the song. And, you know, that's more referral business from Malik Berry. That's more excellent positive branding from Malik Berry. And frankly speaking, he can't reach the entire world to be saying, no, no, no. Uh, Ade is the one that did the song. And that's frankly speaking, not his responsibility after the initial time of what he's done in terms of saying, no, it, it's not like he can't reach every single person constantly saying, no, I'm not the one that produced it. That's too much to ask anybody to do. That sole responsibility is on our day. You're listening Secondly, to the, the statement that Ade has made with respect to uh, not being paid royalties. I've discussed the distinction between U.S. and Nigeria in terms of how producers are paid. And unfortunately, producers and their rights need to be represented solidly in the Nigerian music market, they have a long way to go. Entertainment lawyers listening to this in Nigeria and producers listening, get with your entertainment lawyers. Uh, make sure you get good deals negotiated for you. And, um, you know, start, start having a little more um, demand. Artists are making a lot of money off beats and going overseas and everything else. And, and you, the producer, are still stuck in the little studio producing a song that's making so much money and you're the only one losing out in the whole value chain in terms of compensation. So I told you the two distinctions and then I discussed a little bit more about Ade's claim and we'll see what happens. All right, that's it for me. It's a quick one, as I said. We'll catch up with you guys pretty soon. 2018 is definitely going to be fire.